okay. Let's go. Fall is an interesting time to go exploring in your garden. Even though things are dying back, it's interesting to see what is left behind. Here are some bee balm and the seed pods that are left behind, as well as the milkweed plant that attracts butterflies, especially monarchs, and their interesting seed pods. If you let beautiful coneflowers go to seed, they end up being food for the birds, especially finches. I also encourage you to go to the internet and find seed pod examples on your own. We're going to study an artist whose name is Angie Lewin, and she does prints, like woodcut block prints, except that she uses a clay background and carves into them. Her designs are then inked and printed onto paper in various colors. She always uses a background and a foreground in her pictures. And let's remember that when we do our own designs. Even though hers are printed, we are going to try and translate that in various colors of paper and design. So you may already have a packet of various papers, colors, patterns, but even if you don't, um, there are ways that you can get your own pattern paper. For instance, here is an ad that I got from my local flyer, and you can just look for a nice little pattern and cut this out so it you know, takes on an abstract quality and that could be used possibly for one of our flowers or seed pods. <clears throat> and put that aside and we'll decide if we'll do something with it later. Um, another thing you can do is take um, anything that you look um, or you find might make an interesting pattern. Here I have a grill from my oven and I just put paper over that and use uh, the flat side of a white crayon and just do a rubbing. And I think you may have seen this. You can experiment with coins um, and make a rubbing from that or anything that has sort of an interesting design to it and is made out of a stronger material like hard plastic or metal. So that looks like it might turn into something as far as either a pattern for the ground or it could be a pattern for a seed pod. And we'll also decide that later. Um, the last thing, if you're lucky enough to have some paint, uh, you can Put a little paint in a cup and just take a little sponge, a little regular cellulose sponge, and just see how that works on some colored paper and sort of do a dabbing of the sponge to make an interesting pattern and let that dry and see what you can make out of that. Possibly a cloud or another seed pod or leaves. Um, that all could be decided later. You can also just take any piece of paper, even white paper, and just draw your own design. So just some simple repetitive pattern that um, could be the inside of a flower or a seed pod. And right now we're just making a bunch of random designs and you don't really even have to have a plan for it. You just have to have it on hand. 
and we can figure that out later or we can make patterns as we start assembling our seed pod prairie collage. Use your big um, piece of paper as your background and all the patterns that you make um, can be uh, glued on top of that, uh, whatever you decide to make as far as um, seed pods uh, glue on top of this paper. And we'll figure this out as a puzzle first and then uh, step by step we'll glue them. So let's get started. This is going to be fun. Here I took my background color and added another piece of paper in a wavy line sort of design for the foreground. I cut into it and flipped that color over in what will be the beginning of a seed pod. I added another seed pod of simple shapes and interesting colors and then added to the stem for visual excitement and added another seed pod shape. Here I balanced that yellow seed pod with some yellow dots on the right and added white flowers in the foreground. I also took my background color and cut some strips to add some visual excitement to the foreground. If you have a paper hole puncher, you can add some interesting tiny circles throughout your design. And now I added a white oval to balance with the flowers in front. What can we do with that? Well, let's take our ink pen and draw some designs. Ovals, triangles, and then I filled in the triangles. Sort of looks like a pizza. And then, remember those yellow dots in the corner? I put a design in them and connected them all to make another seed pot. Finally, I cut tiny squares to resemble seeds flying through the air. It adds a little motion to the artwork, but something was still missing. A brilliant sunset. I took my brightest colors, cut some strips, and put more vertical lines that is very satisfying as a finished piece. Well now, let's take a look at some samples from previous workshops. Here is art from a child's workshop that shows some adept use of the hole puncher. And here, just using three colors and a marker pen. This person took the time to put some paint on some blue paper and made a sky. And now from our adult class, this person used a lot of tiny shapes and some good use of her marker pen. So remember, when you do your design, think about what colors you're using, repetition of shapes, and ways that you can make yours a little bit fun and unique. I'd love to see them all. If you like that workshop and want to find out more about Angie Lewin, there's a beautiful book called Angie Lewin, Plant and Pla Plants and Places. And you can see if you can get that from your local library. Um, it's filled with beautiful renderings of her designs. Uh, just a beautiful book to look at and to read about her thoughts and how to put these things together and her inspirations. This is a sketchbook of hers where she figures out the design beforehand and just um, exquisite drawings. Uh, if you would like to send me your masterpiece, I would love to see what you did with this program. Just send it to T. Murphy at phpl.info and we'd love to put it up on our social media. Thanks for participating and I hope to see you at a future Young Artists Family Workshop.
Goodbye now. Bye.